This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Domain.com. In honor of Discovery's 25th anniversary of Shark Week, Techzilla went in search of the tech of sharks. Um, so, okay, sharks in, inherently are, are not extremely technical themselves. They are animals. <laughs> but the tracking of white sharks involves an incredible amount of tech, uh, like data sensing pop-up tags that communicate via satellite. Autonomous ocean-going robots called <laughs> wave gliders are him bleeding edge tech working to reveal the secrets of white sharks. And we sent Patrick down to White Shark Research Central in Monterey, California to talk to scientists at the Hopkins Marine Station and the Monterey Bay Aquarium to get the story. So the research has changed a lot over the years mm -hmm. and in the beginning we have uh, you know researchers studying sharks the only way they know how is by direct observation and so that's gradually changed over the years um, and one of our uh, close colleagues Scott Anderson began noticing that the notches on the fins of certain sharks was distinct mm -hmm. so from the top of the island he could tell one shark from the other with his binoculars began getting some photos and now we have a really intensive photo ID program and we've realized that uh, we can catalog all these sharks and these fins don't change. Some of those original shots taken 25 years ago, um, we're still seeing those sharks today. Things start to change radically when scientists are able to actually attach tags that track the animals. Everybody thought that white sharks were primarily coastal species moving north and south. Nobody knew that they're spending half the year out in the open ocean, mm -hmm. out by Hawaii or out in this white shark cafe between Hawaii and uh, Baja. So a pop-up tag is an archival tag that stores data about light, about temperature, and about depth. Every 30 seconds, every 60 seconds, while it rides along on this animal, and after some period of time, up to a year perhaps, the tag will release itself, it'll float to the surface, and then relay the data back using a satellite system. The first pop-up tags went on white sharks and everybody was waiting for them to pop up and relay their data. And lo and behold, they popped up, one near Hawaii, one out in the center of the Pacific, and uh, people were just like, wow, this just opens up a whole new uh, idea of, of what these sharks are all about. I know everybody in the audience in Texilla is automatically thinking, oh, you GPS for sharks, but right. GPS doesn't work underwater. That's right. Uh, how, that's do, right. how do the tags actually track the location? So that's been the big challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I, I put this tag on, it's archiving all this information. It's measuring the temperature, uh, it's measuring the depth, and it's measuring light level. So the light level is sort of the key to later determining the track of the animal. So you can literally look at the sunrise and the sunset exactly. and compare that to the water temperature. It's kind of an ancient mariner's uh, way of estimating longitude. Mm -hmm. So you get the time of sunrise and sunset and you can get a local noon time halfway between and on the clock and the tag you compare where local noon is to GMT and that gives you your longitude. So we established a very sophisticated data management system that allows us to do everything from taking the light data and the temperature data off of a tag and reconstructing the track where that animal went to then building a, a statistically robust model that tells us, well, given the points that we found, what is the most likely track through those points? Mm -hmm and being able to then overlay a lot of different tracks from a lot of different animals, even ones using different kinds of tags, and, and starting to ask questions about, okay, if we divide the ocean up into a bunch of squares, what squares get hit the most often? What squares have the most number of different species passing through them? And in this way, we can start to build a hotspot map that tells us where are those key places in the ocean that are really important to a lot of different critters. So you're currently actually doing a lot of work tracking the, the migration and the movement of the younger sharks with a new form of tag. How does this, how does this differ from the Sea Tag Geo? Yeah, we're, well we're starting to work with a, a local company right here in the Monterey Bay uh, called Desert Star and the juvenile white sharks are moving north and south, the best we can tell, seasonally from Southern California down into Mexico and back right along the coast. And that's largely a north-south movement. So we're not getting the best part of our uh, uh, light technology, which is determining longitude, because they're going up, a, up and right. down. So we're, we're, we're moving to this other tag, and it uses um, uh, a magnetometer. Mm -hmm. And it measures the Earth's magnetic field at different places. And in some areas on the Earth, there are nice uh, magnetic uh, field gradients uh, that this uh, sensor is capable of, uh, uh, of detecting. 
And so with that, we're hoping to get a much finer uh, estimate of position north and south. So something we haven't talked about that you mentioned earlier uh, is you're actually using sonar to track movements of sharks currently. Right, and that's a third uh, tagging technology mm -hmm. that we're using. It doesn't collect any data, mm -hmm. it just emits a ping. It's like a coded ping. So every minute and a half, it, it, each tag emits a coded set of eight clicks mm -hmm. that uh, is, is unique. And then we've stationed receivers in different parts uh, to uh, log those pings. Do you take the acoustic sensing technology and, and somehow transport that to the White Shark Cafe in the middle of the ocean? I mean, that's something that we would really love to do. We've begun using a new technology. It's called a wave glider. It's a self-powered vehicle that can travel along. And we've done some experiments now where we've actually put these listening devices on the wave gliders. So as the wave glider is swimming along, we're actually detecting the white sharks. Oh, and wow. so one of the things we hope to do is to be able to take one of these wave gliders and send it offshore out there to the, to the uh, white shark cafe and start listening for white sharks and uh, seeing what we, what we pick up. So you actually had a really amazing opportunity with, with our parent company, Discovery, for Shark Week. Uh, what's the name of the special you were working on? Uh, well, we're working on a special called The Great White Highway. Mm -hmm. And it uh, outlines a lot of the stuff we talked about and, uh, and tracks some of the individual sharks that I, uh, I mentioned um, that have been coming around the Fairlawns for up to two decades and more. Mm -hmm. And really exposes some of the secrets of their lives and, and, and their migratory patterns and, and shows you sort of how we do it. So it's going to be pretty cool. Pretty exciting yeah. stuff. Great White Highway premieres on Discovery this Thursday, August 16, 2012. I'll be over at Robert's house to watch it. I gotta say, this is incredible. This was a major learning experience for mm -hmm. me. Uh, you know, I surf, I sail, I kayak, I think of myself as bait, right? Because, um, you know, we live in very sharky waters up here. We're we in the do. middle of the Red Triangle. Um, it was interesting. You, you kind of think, like, you see Jaws when you're five, think sharks are everywhere. And, and both uh, Dr. Jorgensen and Dr. Kochiever said, look, a study came out recently that estimates there may be only 220 adult white sharks in the Northern Pacific. What? Right. And nobody knows. That's, that's the, uh, based on the tracking they're doing, that's the estimate. Now, there, there may have been 220 of them for thousands of years. There may have been 10,000 until a few years ago. Nobody really knows because they're still figuring out a lot of what's going on. Nobody knew until a few years ago that, hey, they don't just travel up and down you know, the coastline. Nobody really knows where baby sharks come from, literally. I mean, mama sharks, but where in the ocean they actually come from. Uh, Only time. I don't think storks dive that well. <laughs> shark, baby shark, to, very hazardous to their That's just an awesome cartoon situation. of a stork yeah. carrying a shark to yeah. them. Yeah, it's difficult for many reasons. Anyway, <laughs> if you want to get personal with shark tracking, you can download SharkNet. This iOS app lets you experience the thrill of finding out when the whites come back to our local corner of the ocean. And it's been built by Stanford University researchers working with Earth NC and Gaia GPS. SharkNet will ping you when tagged white sharks are detected at some of their favorite spots along the Northern California coastline, Tamales Point, the Farallon Islands, or Ano Nuevo. Yeah, and uh, look, I want to take a moment to, to thank Dr. Rackle Cochever from the Hopkins Marine Station. Dr. Salvador Jorgensen and Ken Peterson from the Monterey Bay Aquarium for making the time for us. And hey, look, I am a huge fan Me of too. the Monterey Bay Aquarium. If you haven't been there, you need to go. If you are near Monterey, go see the aquarium, whether you have kids or not. It's epic. I hope they get another white shark this fall. The new Jellies experience. It's, it's utterly incredible. Oh, two puns, one segment. The, the Jellies experience is gorgeous. And uh, I want to take my sons to go see the new Sea Dragon babies. You, you otter. I otter. Get I it, otter you, you see otter, the sea dragon uh, you babies. You otter see the sea. Yeah. yeah. So where's the tech ocean boy? They actually have. It's amazing. They have new interactive exhibits in the uh, in the jelly experience, mm -hmm. and they've added some into the older uh, jellyfish experience. Well, actually, what they allow you to do is actually click on like little microscopic organisms and they pop up and you can rotate and learn about them and see them Ooh. in real time in a way that doesn't really take away from, because normally like people do, you know, we have a big audio visual experience in the museum. No, 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 no. This is like, yeah, and it's, it's very kid friendly and it's touch friendly and it's very cool. Monterey Bay Aquarium, ladies and gentlemen, go there, get your ocean on. Then you can go shopping on Cannery Row. <laughs> well, there's more Texella coming right up, but before we do that, it's time to thank one of our sponsors. 
Need a .com for any new website or blog you set up, and a .com domain name is instantly recognizable and globally understood. It adds instant credibility to any website, no matter what name you choose. If you're setting up a website to start a new business, showcase your portfolio, or publish your blog, for example, Domain.com is the best place to go for your next great idea. Plus, Domain.com's active social media presence on Twitter, at Domain.com, and great customer support make it a great place to do business. We have an awesome coupon code with a big fat 20% discount off Domain.com's already low prices. Use the coupon code TECHZILLA when you check out at Domain.com. That's 20% off, folks. Big time savings. And don't forget, give the Texilla coupon code some love. You'll get that 20% discount and we'll also be helping out our very show. When you think domain names, think domain.com. And that's a dot com.